Hiking is one of the most therapeutic activities people do that entails endurance and strength. It's a bit tough, but most hikers enjoy the process and are rewarded with a scenic view. However, there are only so many mountains that one can climb in its native place. So for today's video, we'll be sharing with you a list of the tallest mountains around the world that are safe for the average hikers. Let's start with Garth Hill, Gwilid Weigarth in Cardiff, UK. At 307 meters, Garth is classified as a Maryland, a hill with a relative height of at least 150 meters rather than a mountain. On a clear day, you'll get stunning views of Cardiff and the Bristol Channel. At the bottom is a fantastic pub called the Gwilidi Garth Inn. Many small hikes lead to the summit but take walking boots because it's frequently muddy. Next we have Ben McDewey, located in Cairngorms, Scotland. The Cairngorm Mountains Ben McDewey, the second highest mountain in the UK at 1,309 meters, offers breathtaking views as you climb the mountain, with new peaks and valleys appearing nearly every few steps. Mind you, to ascend this mountain, you must be physically fit and have good navigational skills. Third on our list today is the Aran Fodwe, Snowdonia National Park in Wales. The highest peak in the Arans in southeast Snowdonia is Aran Fodwe, which rises to a height of 905 meters. You might discover that you are the only person up there if you time it correctly. Try to choose a day without clouds to take in the craggy cliffs and beautiful valleys that this hike has to offer. It's a mountain that is incredibly underappreciated and gives wonderful vistas. Moving on, there are several hike-worthy mountains you should climb in Europe, as well as Swinica, the Tatra Mountains in Poland. The Tatra Mountains, above the southern Polish town of Zakopana, a well-known skiing destination in the winter, offers countless chances for a variety of guided day walks throughout the summer, taking in wildflower meadows and breathtaking lakes. The highest point along the Slovakia-Poland border is called Swinica. To get to the 1,987-meter Kasprawi weir, which requires a difficult climb, some choose to use a cable car. It takes around three hours to ascend from here to the peak, which is at 2,301 meters. After that, you can use steel chains to aid you to climb exposed steep crag sections to the summit. Plus, there's also Monte Brazzone in Lake Lugano, Italy. That's a definite must-climb for any hiker. Many historic settlements and numerous routes leading up into the Alps are tucked into the forested mountainside above Lake Lugano. The 1,400 434 meter summit of Monte Bronzone is reachable from the Dacio settlement. Spend a few days here and you'll also find stunning waterfalls, vast caves, secluded farmsteads, and some unusual fauna. This high point provides breathtaking views of Lake Lugano and the car-free Castello village. Now, when we talk about Nepal, most people associate it with Mount Everest, but there are a lot more mountains one should hike in the country, such as the Kala Pathar in Kumba Valley. Trekkers in the Kumba Valley can get the greatest views of Mount Everest from Kala Pathar. This 15-day climb to the wildly popular Everest base camp usually includes a stop at this 5,600-meter summit. You won't be dissatisfied when you reach the peak of Kala Pathar, despite the climb's steep, slick, and winding nature. From here, the top of Mount Everest appears to be inhumanly high. At this point in my journey, I began to have doubts about my capacity to complete the ascent. Remember to stay hydrated and pay attention to AMS, acute mountain sickness, symptoms, including headaches and nausea. Morocco has a mountain you should try climbing, and it's Jebel Tubkal in the Atlas Mountains. The pyramidal building anchored to the summit of Jebel Tubkal, the tallest peak in North Africa at 4,167 meters, makes it easy to identify. Trekkers go to the Tubkal refuge from the tiny settlement of Imlil, where they spend the night before beginning their ascent to the summit the following morning. In the summer, getting to the top is a difficult hike on loose scree, rocks, and boulders. It can be difficult because of the heat and altitude, so take your time and drink lots of water. After finishing, replenish with a tasty Berber tagine and a cup of mint tea. This next mountain is one of the scenic views in this country, so while you're in the area, you might as well check out the scenic views of Stony Bay Peak in Akaroa, New Zealand. On the South Island of New Zealand, there is a circular signposted round that leads to the peak of Stony Bay Peak, 806 meters, and back from the lovely beach town of Akaroa. Panorama Panoramic views of the Hindwai Conservation Area and the brilliant Blue Bay on the Banks Peninsula will be your reward. Watch out for Australian magpies, which occasionally enjoy flashy objects. Those in average shape should be able to complete the ascent in about five hours. Tori James is a member of the Beeline Britain crew that broke a record in June by traveling non-stop from Land's End to John O'Groats. The Kendall Mountain Festival in Cumbria, which runs from November 20th to 23rd, will feature screenings of the documentary as the crew. Pro fly.
Lies, which chronicles their journey. Of course, this list wouldn't be complete if we didn't include the Half Dome in Yosemite National Park in California, USA. One of the best climbing regions in the world is home to the impressive granite rock formation known as Half Dome. Steel cables and steep granite steps are used by hikers to ascend this 2,694-meter behemoth. The 16-mile trail passes magnificent waterfalls and towering trees. Only those who are physically fit and have a head for heights should try the walk, which is long, steep, and exceedingly difficult and can take up to 12 hours. Due to its popularity, permits are needed and obtained through a lottery application. Next, this entry hails from Africa, which is Mount Meru in Tanzania. With a height of 4,566 meters, Mount Meru is the second highest mountain in Tanzania and the fifth highest mountain in Africa. It is located to the west of Kilimanjaro. If you want to climb Kilimanjaro, it makes a terrific warm-up. And if you only have a short amount of time, it's a quicker and less crowded alternative. The best thing about this mountain is the chance to see animals like water buffalo, giraffes, warthogs, and dick dicks on its lower slopes. Accommodations are in wooden huts, and you must be accompanied by an armed ranger. Now, if you think these mountains are a little too steep for your liking and health, then we suggest you try hiking the following mountains instead. For a relatively easy climb, try hiking Gray's Peak in Colorado. The 53 peaks in Colorado that are 14ers, reaching 14,000 feet, 4,000 meters or more, are known for being very challenging. This is primarily due to their elevation, which places all of these mountains among the tallest in the lower 48 states. They may be tall, and all but the most prepared and physically fit will probably experience some consequences of the altitude, headaches, nausea, shortness of breath, etc., but that doesn't make them impossible to reach. Consider Gray's Peak, a popular front range summit for first-timers. You'll begin trekking at 11,240 feet, even though the top is at 14,267 feet, 4,348 meters, 3,426 meters. You'll climb just over 3,000 feet, 900 meters, in a quick 3.6 miles, 5.8 kilometers, along easy trails from the trailhead to the summit. A stiff day, but by no means a slog, which makes Grays one of the best introductions to hiking mountains you'll find in the Rockies. Feeling good on top? Tack on another 14er, Torrey's Peak, less than a mile away. Another mountain you should hike as a beginner is Mount Adams in Washington. It's difficult for anyone to spend a lot of time in the Pacific Northwest marveling at the several snow-capped volcanoes there without harboring climbing aspirations. There are simpler places to start than the Cascade Mountains, which may evoke pictures of crampon and ice axe-clad mountaineers roped together, donning enormous puffy coats and headlamps affixed to their helmets. Despite being the second tallest peak in Washington at 12,276 feet, 3,741 meters, Mount Adams is one of the area's more laid-back mountaineering destinations and a wonderful spot to learn the fundamentals. Previously, the South Spur Path was so straightforward that miners frequently made the journey up to supply sulfur mining on the mountain. Regular hiking boots will work just fine in the late summer, but in the spring and early summer, you can practice using crampons and ice axes on the milder slopes without worrying about going all the way down the mountain. Once you see Mount Rainier from the top of this volcano, you'll be itching for a more challenging peak in no time. Last but not least, we have Hawksbill Mountain in Virginia. Although a 23-mile, 37-kilometer backpacking trek in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia may seem like diving right in, Shenandoah National Park is one of the greatest places for beginners to start. Divide it into a few days and stick to daily distances of 5 to 7 miles, 8 to 11 kilometers. You can obtain expansive views of the surrounding hills and valleys from Hawksbill Mountain, the tallest peak in the park, which may entice you to hike a portion of the well-known Appalachian Trail from Hawksbill Gap south toward Elkton. And that sums up today's video about the tallest mountains in the world that are safe for the average hike. Thanks for watching today's video and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. See you next time!